One of the key values of the 3D Experience platform is an ability to have multiple stakeholders collaborate in a single environment for an efficient product development process. Let's see that manifest in a short demonstration. Here, we're in a web browser, and as an analyst, I log in and I see the task that's been assigned to me to perform today. And I've been asked in particular to perform a manufacturability simulation in support of an engineering change action. Change actions are often used to govern the formal release of a part from engineering to manufacturing. Before starting our task, we can do a quick review of the actual part still in our web browser, which is a very efficient way to understand the task at hand and ask any clarifying questions as appropriate. Here, we don't have any questions, and so we can directly set our task to in work and then open our change action in our authoring environment to begin our manufacturability simulation setup. This is useful because we have access to all the right context to support the actual task at hand. Here, we're gonna click the work under button, which will ensure that any simulation artifacts created will automatically be associated back to the change action, creating a digital thread. Now we start to set up our actual plastic injection simulation. This is a very simple simulation to set up within the 3D Experience platform. All the information required to perform the simulation comes from the materials as well as the different design data that's already been specified. As such, we can simply perform our simulation and understand if the part is manufacturable. In this particular case, we find out that a short shot has occurred. What that means, if you're unfamiliar with plastic injection terminology, it says material flows into the part, it's hardening before the part is fully formed, preventing complete creation of the component. You can see in the animation here, in the top two corners of the part, we simply have no material, and so we would be unable to manufacture the component based upon our current manufacturing process. From here, we then transition back into a web browser where we'll see that we have connected our simulation directly to the change action through that work under command. We can now do a lightweight review of these simulation results. This can be really helpful so that the extended community working on the particular project can understand what has been predicted by the simulation without having to go into the amount of detail that an analyst may expect and need to do in an authoring environment. The next, the next task at hand will be to actually create an issue so that we can notify someone of the outcome of our simulation. To do that, we drag the part into a issue widget, and then we start to describe the issue that we have identified. And in particular, as you may recall, we have a short shot, and so we could perhaps add a additional gate location or redesign our mold in order to force more material into the component. We'll provide that issue with a 3D location on the actual part, in this case, the injection location, as well as the associated context in terms of the simulation, which suggests that there is an issue to resolve. From here, the design team goes off. They update the design, adding another gate location. And we can now verify through the use of simulation that our component is fully manufacturable. So that is an example of what's happened just as people went through their day-to-day -day engineering work. Let's see what's happened behind the scenes. And to do that, we're going to look at the relations that are either upstream or downstream of this particular part. And what you see here are the things that you noticed in the little demonstration. We have the issue, we have the material assigned to the part, we have the change action. We can continue to explore the relationships to see the task related to the change action. A project that we never even saw that was related to the task. Similarly, we can start to explore other objects. And from the simulation that was created to understand whether or not the part was manufacturable, what is the mesh? What is the original geometry? The key is all the relationships you see on the screen here were not manually created. They're simply the result of people using 3D experience to do their engineering work. I believe this is extremely exciting. 
and I hope you've enjoyed this small demonstration and peek into the world of 3D experience collaboration.